Tonight, I got a tale for you about sirens. The Greeks imagined them to be part bird, part woman. In Anglo-Latin culture, half woman, half fish. Uh, top half woman. Doesn't really matter how they look, it's their voices you want to watch out for. Singing songs so beautifully, they lure sailors to a watery demise. Let's begin. The call of the sea calls many indeed. For reasons quite varied and wide. The seasick and cabin boy pondered on this as he vomited over the side. For what reason had he to be out at sea on this bitterly cold starlit night? Well, he was the lookout, and lookout did he, lest the ship's bow be dashed by the ice. Still a young mind can wonder, and wonder it did, on money and women and beer. Then a feminine voice emerged from the sea, and the song landed sweet on his ear. Come to me, come to me under the waves, and let my embrace keep you warm. Take a look over the side of the ship, and gaze at my beautiful form. He leaned over and squinted, but struggled to find the source of the sweet melody. Still further he stretched, as the ship's bow struck ice, and at first he fell to the sea. Tensions were high the next day on the ship, for reasons I need not explain. Rations were low, and so was the patience of the cook and the bosun McLean. The cook was exhausted, and McLean's hands were raw from fixing the ship's damaged bow. When the captain passed by and barked out commands, the two of them muttered and scowled. The last of the crew was the first mate Morgan, who the captain could trust with his life. He kept watch that night, and staving off boredom, thought of his children and wife. Pirates had ravaged the towns near the coast, and he prayed that his loved ones were well. But Morgan would shortly turn white as a ghost when he heard these few words from the swell. Come to me, come to me out to the waves For nothing remains on this earth Your family was killed in the last of the raids So how much is living now worth? No, Morgan wailed, you lying sea cow! But somehow he knew it was true. He pulled out his pistol, aimed at his brow, and <laughs> tumbled into the blue. The shot woke the men, and in minutes the deck rang with slurs from the last of the crew. Sirens, Captain, exclaimed the cook, I think you mistake us for fools. Do I care what you think, you petulant turd? I'm in command of this ship. You both best be clever and follow my word or else you'll be taking a dip. The cook and McLean went back down again, cursing while the captain took watch. The hours went by whilst the stars filled the sky, and he sipped on the last of his scotch. He took one last swig, looked at his glass, and hurled it down into the surf. He'd need all his cunning and had to think fast when the sea answered back with the verse. Captain, your weight is as sharp as a knife And I can't convince you to part with your life But grant me more verses and I'll tell you instead How before the sun rises you will be dead Minutes went by and the captain was tense, biting down hard on his tongue 
be you can handle the fear and suspense. I can't you more verses explain what you sung. Silence. Uh, Siren, I grant you- Captain, you better beware of your crew for your treacherous men will be coming for you. He will die in torment and pain. Tonight you'll be stabbed in the back by McLean. The captain's mind raced. He could now understand it was clear. His men's hatred ran deep. Well, now that he knew he concocted a plan, I'll drown the sick dogs in their sleep. <laughs> Down in the cabins, a knocking was heard, and the startled cook suddenly woke. The knocking got louder. He trembled, disturbed. It was coming from under the boat. He crouched on the floor upon hearing a voice and heard these faint words through the wood. Your captain is mad. He's heading for ice. Get to the deck if you value your life. He ran to the deck and spotted the captain boarding the only lifeboat. He leapt at the man, but the captain was strong and he soon had the cook by the throat. The captain cried out, shuddered and shook. His back had been pierced by a blade. He stumbled forward, keeping hold of the cook, and the two tumbled into the waves. McLean rushed up to the wheel of the ship, mere seconds from hitting the ice. But with blood on your hands, it's tricky to grip. And the ship and the lifeboat were sliced. The water rose fast. It was bitterly cold, so freezing he quickly went numb. And just as his body was leaving his soul, he thought he heard somebody hum. So remember this tale, there's a lesson in this For men who are foolish and young if a maiden seems willing, but smells like a fish, tis best if ye don't take the plunge. <laughs> there you are.